and I think that takes a lot of faith from a lot of you, but actually we'll, I'll do my best. Um, I'm just going to carry on today with um, uh, the old theme about devoted. Uh, sorry, this is sort of making a lot of noise to me. That's better. better. That's better. That's better. Uh, on the theme of devoted, which I've done over the past number of weeks, I think it was six weeks ago, it started on the theme, taken from one verse in the book of Acts. And, uh, uh, and today, I'm going to just look and focus on devoted to fellowship, or the fellowship. Um, if you were away over the summer, may I just recommend that you just listen to these? Because actually, for one of the preachers, I asked people, have they ever heard of the Agape Love Feast? And everybody was like, huh? And so you can have some new teaching there that you obviously didn't realize and how that relates to what we call breaking the bread and communion and so on. Very important for us as a church. So I'd recommend that you just actually listen on the audio or, on, or visually on the uh, video cast, uh, which is each week except the prayer one, uh, which didn't come out in the video, but it did on the audio. Uh, and just catch up on what you missed out on the summer. Not just because I spoke, but I think it is important for this church. So I'd really encourage you to actually catch up on what you've missed if you've been away. Um, so I'm just going to pray now and ask for God's help uh, as I share uh, this morning. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to get up here and the sense of responsibility to share uh, your word with my brothers and sisters here today. And Father, thank you for the amazing things that have already happened and the things that are happening through the church and uh, the great things of seeing new babies born into our midst and the new life that that is. And Father, we rejoice in that. And Father, thank you for the new life that you brought to us by your Holy Spirit you know, as we trusted in Jesus, that we could become children of God and actually come into your presence to know you, worship you, and have a relationship with you. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So the, the verse which I'm going to just show up again, which is what, uh, or the short passage of Scripture, Acts 2, 42 to 47, which I'm just going to read from, and we'll focus into the Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those who are perhaps not familiar with this passage, what had happened, Jesus had been crucified. He rose again from the dead. He promised the Holy Spirit would be poured out on the day of Pentecost in not many days after his ascension to heaven. And then... The new church was born, and then this started happening where Peter got up and he preached to the, the crowds from around the, the world and throughout uh, the, the known world of the time. Uh, and actually, many, many people, 3,000 people joined the church in a sense. 3,000 people believed in Jesus on that day. And then you see what happens as they, as they used to go to the temple courts as a large gathering and then to the homes where they met day after day and broke bread together and prayed and studied together with the apostles' teaching or doctrine and, uh, and had fellowship one with another. And today we're going to look and zoom in on that word fellowship. I've, sp I've spent the last three sessions on some of the other aspects of that, just that one verse in verse 42. And when we see often the word koinonia here for fellowship, it is also uh, a word used for communion. And we hear terms about the Anglican Communion, have you heard that? Or the Roman Catholic Communion as a church denomination. And it's as a name that they are uh, known as. And the Lambeth Conference in 1930 actually said about a fellowship with one, what they call Holy Catholic, that's universal church, not Roman Catholic church, but the Holy Catholic Church, um, and uh, made up of all the dioceses and so on. Uh, not only in England, but around the world. And so they are called the Anglican, Anglican Communion or Fellowship. And I'm just going to read, because this word koinonia comes from koin, K-O-I-N, which is a root word from which so many other words come. And if you could just quickly, so, uh, you know, it's not that just simple as just saying, you know, koinonia. There's a lot uh, related to this word, because in the Bible Illustrated Dictionary, the Tyndale uh, book, it says this, communion in the New Testament, basic term translated variously, communion, fellowship, 
communicate, partake, contribution, common in the sense of communist, uh, not communist, communist as in Latin and stems from the Greek root coin. And there are two adjectives for that word and also uh, the same for nouns. And um, you can see them there on the screen. I don't know whether I can even pronounce them, but actually they're in Greek. Uh, but uh, it's koinoinos, synkoinoinos, and the verbs koinoinio and synkoinoinio. And the noun which is actually in this passage, the Acts 2.42, which is koinoinia, and uh, uh, that is all from this root word koin, uh, which is a, a, a partaking or sharing or the sense of having something in common or having a share giving a share or sharing in general. And uh, you see how they share their properties and so on. But actually, I want to focus, just like I did about devoted, we talk about being devoted to God or devoted to prayer uh, and those things here. But actually, at the end, first starting off, Christ and God the Father were devoted to us, are devoted to us more than we could be devoted to him. And that's where I want to take it back to as we look at the, the letter of 1 John 1, the first chapter of 1 John verse 3. This is what John writes. He says, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, it says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So any fellowship that we have together as Christians comes from the fellowship we have with God the Father through Jesus' his Son and the Holy Spirit living in us as his children, as we've been born again into his family, as we've even sung uh, this morning. And, and the fellowship that, that we have as all true believers, and so I understand how we may have an Anglican communion, a Roman Catholic communion, we have different groups of people, but actually in this fellowship, worldwide, whether they're from the Anglican communion or the believers from the Catholic communion or what have you, we are all part of that same fellowship of those who are true believers who are trusted in Jesus are all part of that communion with God through what Jesus has done for us and I, I put now trust in him. And uh, it, it is a, an important understanding that we are part of the body of Christ Although we are a different expression, we may even have our differences, we may have our different emphases, but actually for all those who have trusted in Jesus as their Savior, but they trust in Him and come to a relationship with Him through the Holy Spirit coming and dwelling them, we are now children of God, part of this big fellowship family of God through what God has done for us. And here we see that, um, uh, that God has put a, a commission uh, uh, upon them. Um, as the disciples in, 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 uh, in the latter part of uh, Matthew, where he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nation, nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And actually, it is, uh, it is something that we must realize that Christianity is all about relationship with God. And so becoming a disciple is becoming a learner, but it's becoming a child. And we all are needing to be children for the rest of our days, ready to learn. I'm still learning things. I'm going to keep on learning things till God ends my time on earth and I go to be in glory with him. And so uh, there's an important part here that I want to emphasize as we look at the scripture of let's just zoom in because these people were meeting in the temple courts, which is the large gathering, like we are this morning in a sense, the largest celebration gathering, and then they met in their homes. And, and uh, those numbers could be anything from three or four people to maybe 70 people in the households of those days. And so you have the larger gatherings where there's encouragement, celebration, and where we've even come together this morning and, and together we say we stand together to bring up these children and support these children. Our children are out at the moment in the kids' church, Freedom Kids, and in the crash and the youth and so on. And we say we stand in together to bring our gifts to the table, as it were, to encourage one another as we come in the bigger thing. But then there's the smaller gathering, the caring place, the place of listening. You know what? People want to be listened to. There's nothing quite like listening to people and giving them a chance to say how they're feeling and not jumping in before they finish their sentence. And also, the opportunity to listen to you all this morning, I could not do it. If you were waiting at the door, say, how are you going on? We'd be here till tomorrow, wouldn't we? But actually, in small groups, in that small group setting in the homes of small groups. And you know where I'm going on this. 
there's the opportunity for caring, for listening, for praying with one another for our needs and he, uh, feeling that one's been heard in that uh, and the development, the release of gifts of one with another as we are sharing. And so they were devoted uh, uh, to the gathering in large groups and in small groups. And uh, you've heard the term for life groups. We've had numerous different, you have Bible study groups, home groups, life groups, you know, uh, all sorts of different groups. There's a Heinz 57 variety of different types of groups you can have. But actually, what really matters is that one's meeting in a group. And uh, Christianity is all about relationship. Relationship with God and relationship with one another. Uh, you know, the, the great commandment says to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. We need the first part. We need fellowship with God to have fellowship with one another. But fellowship is so, so important. That life which is Christ in us is being shared with others. And I'd just like to share something of our experience, Jen and I. We became Christians now, I think it was, what was it, 1979, which January 79, uh, December 79, which is sort of like about uh, 38 years ago. And when we first became Christians, we, um, I was Welsh Methodist background, I went to a Methodist church, but found a home really down in St. Paul's Church in New Street. And, um, and Mike Field was the minister then, he'd not long arrived, about six months before. And we, we thought, well, yeah, we, we related to what they were saying and what was... Um, what they were preaching and so on, because something had happened in our lives, in our home, where we came to a trust and faith in Jesus, which transformed our outlook as regards of even having been brought up with a church background, of coming to, what well, as I said again, this relationship with God the Father through what Jesus had done for us, which just like was like, saying about seeing the light, it was just like as if our eyes were opened and we just wanted just more and more. You couldn't keep us out of church gatherings. We were like so always there to the last, like we are now. You know, it's just like you want to be there with other Christians. And, and, and um, we were going to St. Paul's, and Mike Field, um, uh, literally into the January 1980, he came around our house in Grooville. We lived in Grooville then. I'd come over as a, a GP, as a doctor in the island. And, um, and we didn't know many people, but actually Mike said, no, the, he gave us the best bit of advice that we've ever had in our lives as far as a Christian faith is concerned. He said, may I just recommend you get into what they call then a Bible study group, or a house group, or a life group, if you want to call it that. And uh, as it happened, uh, there was John and Danny DeFeu who lived just at La Rock and around the corner, and so we, uh, we just, uh, they were just starting their group again, or they were starting on the Book of Acts, and their daughter Sophie DeFeu Labalastier, who the ones, remember she was an ALC, at 15, 16 years old, and we were so grateful. Because she was ready to babysit, we were able to grow as Christians. And when you serve even in babysitting, you release others to start growing. And as we all bring our gifts and our contributions. So even as a young girl, she was serving us, and then we were able to learn. But uh, it was just amazing what was happening. The, the Bible was coming alive to us. Um, remember, we were new Christians. I, I, you know, I, was, right, I was a doctor, I was a GP, but I hated reading in front of people. Believe that. I hated getting up to speak in front of people. I remember once in St. Paul's, when we were in St. Paul's, Jeff Powell phoning up and saying, John, will you read Galatians 6 you know, for a reading on Sunday? I've been there a few months. I thought, oh, I can't read it in front of people. <laughs> I was so nervous. I, I, I spent two or three days practicing Galatians chapter 6. And when I got up on the rostrum, my knees were knocking so much, I almost fell off. That's how, that's how it was. But actually what I'm saying is you're, God takes you from where you are and starts putting you on a journey. And in that journey, in that, um, in that life group that we were in, you know, you know when you, you're reading, if you're a bit nervous about reading, you're trying to work out because you read around the, the passage in the Bible study group, and you're trying to work out where they're going to land for me. And you're having this little practice run through what you, you know, listening to them. You're, listening, you're thinking, what, where, they, where, where am I going to read? So you just have a little practice thought. And that's the way it was. And to pray just to even say, one-liner prayers. It was difficult, you know, and that was life group. But we learned to pray for each other. We learned to pray for those we loved and for that they may come to know Jesus and situations for people to be healed and for healing for ourselves and so on. And this is where we all learned it all, in the small group. Just getting up here just didn't happen one day. I didn't beam down from heaven and land here. It wasn't like the Terminator, you know what I mean? But uh, you know, we, we went along this process of, uh, of just a process of change in the small group. 
And I, I know for some of us, we've been Christians for years, but we need to be pressed and pushed on uh, if you have that desire and that. Do you want it to grow and mature and contribute and be part and, and see others discipled and bring teaching and encouragement and serve and, you know, all these things? Let me tell you, they are happening here this morning in various ways. And it's just amazing the care and the attention that people are doing in serving us here. But if you want to grow as a new Christian, if you want to see new Christians grow mature Christians, then that's the place to be leading it. Because actually, sometimes we feel, oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't lead a group. And, uh, oh, well, I don't know enough. Well, there are people here who've done 18 months of our evening college that we did at Hillsong Evening College. You've heard preach after preach after preach here. There's loads of resources. There's, a, there's stuff to take and teach. Jen and I were eight months old in the Lord. We, that was the January um, that we went to St. Paul's. Within eight months with John and Danny Fay, we started listening to these tapes by Colin Urquhart, which was Kingdom Faith. We said, oh, we'd love to do this. We said to John and Danny, do you mind if we start a group? And they said, okay, can we come? So they came to our group. And so the group, and we started with that, and we'd listen to the tapes, and then we'd just have a, a work through and, and, and so on. And then uh, within a short time, within a year, 18 months, there were 23 people in this group. Now just think about it. You know, we all think that we, you know, we're too young, we're too this, we're too that, we can't do this, we can't do that. You know what? We, we need small groups in this church. This is a small number compared to the size of the church. If everybody turned up here on a Sunday, we wouldn't get in here. Do you realize that? There's a big number and a small number. I think it seats about 350 people in here. And most weeks, we're around about 3.30, somewhere like that. Sometimes we're full, to, you know, full. But actually, we can't get around everybody. We can't encourage you. We can't pray with everybody. We can't, uh, you know, uh, you can't ask questions in the same way as you can in groups. Maybe we just encourage you to actually think about forming a small group. Because that's what we did. And that's what was the learning process for us. And boy, it's costly sometimes. You're trying to push people out the door at 11 o'clock at night sometimes. You can be stricter than what we were and get them out by 9 o'clock if you like. But actually, you know, there's all sorts of small groups that we've set up. And, uh, and just small groups where you can have a, there's a walking group, there's a cafe group up at St. Peter's and so on. But the aim is to talk about Christ, bring Christ into the conversation, let them know that you love these people, let them know, as Andrew said earlier, that sense of belonging. And that's what is a great need that God has put in each one of us. Firstly, a sense of belonging to him and also a sense of belonging and fellowship through him with other people. But it means actually getting off our backsides and doing something about it. You know what Frank Damasio uh, in, in uh, church, uh, in his book, uh, The Gate Church, uh, I read some years ago, and he was saying that, you know, unless new people get connected within six or seven weeks, they're likely not to stay in church. Think of that. People can wander in or out here over six or seven weeks, as welcoming as we can be, but actually they need to be connected. And how are they going to get connected? Not everybody can get connected to Andrew or me or Jen or Serena and so on. We can't do it, guys. And as the church grows, and I believe this church is going to grow, there's going to be increasing needs. Don't think that you are inadequate. God is adequate for your needs. We've proved it that, you know, God, God can enable you. And it'll be costly, but it'll be joyful. And it's a, a place of really growing in so many ways. And so Jen stood up some weeks ago um, and uh, at the end brought a word of knowledge. She felt God say something. I don't really want to say it now. Do you want to say it now? No, no I say it. Do you want to say it now? Go get the mic then. She always has the last word. I've told you. I'm just, I'm just about to finish. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I got up at the end of the meeting. I really felt strongly that morning that, you know, there were people here and maybe they were wanting even to take a group and just thought, oh, you know, nobody, nobody wants me to take a group. And I got up at the end. I said, I really believe, you know, there are people here today and then within a week, three people came up to me and said, that really spoke to me, and I'm going to start a group as a result of it. Now then, groups can be different. They're as different as we are different. 
It may be Bible study, it may be meeting on a more social basis, but the important thing is, is that we meet together. At the moment, I'm doing my dissertation on church and leadership. For my, I'm doing a, a master's at the minute, which I'm nearly finished. I'm nearly there. Praise the Lord. It's been hard work. And, um, you know, in it, it's come over to me so strongly that the early church grew because they were in small groups. That had they just made a commitment to follow Jesus and just met in the temple court, I think that would have, you know, maybe fizzled out. But what kept it and what means, you know, why we are here today still loving God, giving our life to him, is that they met in groups and they grew in groups. So my heart is that more people in this church, I think, you know, if you're not feeling adequate, we can give you loads of materials, but we would love you to step out, like those three people who did a few weeks ago and have started groups now this term, to say, look, I'm happy to invite a few friends around and meet and start a group. There's very capable people in this congregation. You've been Christians a long time, and I think God would love you to teach people who are newer in the faith. You know, if you want to do that, please come and see me, and we can maybe, those that are new Christians, we can link them to you, and you can take them through a foundation course. So, bit of a nudge again, I'm afraid, but my heart is that we link with others and grow in God. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, there's the challenge. And actually, I, I praise the Lord that a few weeks ago, people did respond to that challenge. But you may have been away. So here's the challenge for you today. All right? And it's a challenge for all of us. And, you know, don't be like, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking Tim last week saying, oh, but, you know, surrendering to the call. It's, it's so common, isn't it? You know, you know you're, Moses says, you're a send Aaron. You know? <laughs> or Jeremiah says, oh, I'm only a child. I can't speak. You know? Or Gideon's hiding away. We think we can't do it. But actually, with God's help, we can. And we'll grow into it. We'll grow into it and God will never let you down. He will never let you be put to shame, it says in Romans 10. Those who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. And it's coming to that place of trusting him and just being, in a sense, growing in that knowledge of God. And actually, you get so, so blessed in the process. Now, for some, it may be just a term. You say, I'm gonna, just going to have a group for a term. That's, you know, for one school term. I mean, uh, Rob and... Uh, Rob, Ryan and Jones wanted to do that, and Rob and Susie, and they ended up, oh, this is good. I think, I think they're still going, are you? And that was about two years ago, wasn't it? Or something, or a year ago, just over a year ago, 18 months ago. And they just decided to start it. And so that's fine. And, you know, it's not forever and ever, amen, you know. It's what is right for the time. And so it's just like we would love you. If you want to speak to us about forming a group in whatever way, and we will help you, and we'll give you pointers to how to do that. But let's just stand together as a church this morning. Let's just ask God that we may really experience fellowship as he desires with one another and with him and also that we see a multiplication of small groups in this church that we can reach out and love not only those who are part of us now but for those who are going to come in in the future. Father we just thank you for your word to us Lord this morning. Thank you for the challenge to each one of us and Father, we do pray now in Jesus' name that you'd help us respond to us if you are calling us uh, to uh, think about starting a new group. Lord, we know that we feel so inadequate of ourselves, but Father, we just thank you that those who trust in you will never be put to shame and that you are our strength and you are our help. And we just come this morning, we just thank you in Jesus' name for wonderful fellowship we experience with you first and foremost and also with each other. And we want to see that extended into a world of loneliness where people have no sense of belonging and just are shut into their homes, just feeling alone. Father, may we reach out to people within the church who can feel lonely here and out and beyond the church uh, to the people we live amongst. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>